in the last stream, we were working on finally setting up our automatic nether star generation system over here with this witherproof cage that is spawning and killing the wither automatically to get us infinite nether stars. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do right at the start of today's stream is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off because otherwise we're gonna spend the whole episode getting hit by wither blasts, which is really not what I'm after. And so I'm gonna set this to uh, run with no redstone signal like that. So now it has a redstone signal. It shouldn't continue to run. Perfect. The reason for that is that I think at some point in the not so distant future, we should move this whole setup into a compact machine for two reasons. One, so that we don't continually get uh, ever so slightly hit by it, which is not really that big of a deal. We don't take enough damage for it to be meaningful. Uh, but two, the second reason is that the blast does actually hurt nearby mobs. And if it kills them, you get a wither rose, which is quite useful because the wither rose can be used in a couple of different crafts, but it also will kill any bees that are within the blast radius as well. Um, as you can see by the fact that we have quite a few wither roses inside of this breeding box. I think for the most part, we basically just lost a few water bees to the blasts there, but it's not ideal. And I think going forward, having this uh, buried inside a compact machine is gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. But that is not what I want to work on in today's episode. Today, I want to look at upgrading our blood altar so that we can potentially look at automating the production of steel casing. Automating this shouldn't be too difficult, at least as far as the starlight infuser is concerned and the pressure chamber. The pressure chamber should be super easy. It should just be a case of putting an Emmy interface on top of this chest, telling the Emmy interface to send wanks to machine blocks, and then those will get processed, and then we can take them out of this chest and pump them back into the ME interface, and that's basically that part automated. Our system already knows how to make the wanks machine blocks over in one of these ME interfaces, this one right here, and so that part should be fairly straightforward. As for the Starlight Infuser, this should also be fairly straightforward due to the fact that there is a custom machine added, that being this guy, the Auto Starlight Infuser. This thing right here works in, I believe exactly the same way as the regular Starlight Infuser, but I think instead of replacing the Starlight in the world, you simply pump the Starlight into the block. Like it has an internal tank that we can then use to refill and auto craft the machine frames. So we just send them over with an ME interface, we get the machine frames back, easy enough. The only tricky part about automating steel casing, I think is this final stage here, getting 20,000 life points into the tier three altar because up until now we've been doing this manually with our sacrificial knife and while we can continue to do that going forward we're going to need quite a few more steel casings especially if we look towards the end of the pack this creative energy cube here requires a ton of energy cubes and each one of these energy cubes requires a steel casing not to mention any extra mechanism machines that we want to make and so it would be ideal if we could automate the production of life points so that we can also just put an ME interface onto said this modular router and have it put the machine frame into the blood altar, turn it to a steel casing and then pump it back into the ME interface. Of course, to do that, we need that unlimited life point setup. And I think our best chance of getting unlimited life points is going to be via the well of suffering. So if we go to the entry index and we type in well, the well of suffering here is a ritual from blood magic that will attack mobs within a damage zone and use the essence of those mobs to put life points into a nearby altar. Essentially, we can sacrifice mobs automatically to generate life points. Now, the downside is that there's a fair bit of blood magic work required before we can get to the well of suffering. The reason for that is that we need these four Dusk runes here, and those Dusk runes are made using the Dusk inscription tool, which requires a tier four altar. So we do first have to upgrade our altar from where it is currently at to tier four before we can then go ahead and look at getting that Well of Suffering. Now, as we saw previously, the uh, tier four blood altar does fit nicely into the space that we have here. And really the only tricky part about this are the Bloodstone Bricks because for the most part, it's just more runes, more stone bricks, and then four bloodstone bricks used as capstones around the outer edge there. And those four bloodstone bricks are where we're gonna start today. 
To make these, we need to get just one weak blood chart. The weak blood chart here is made in an alchemical reaction chamber with one sanguine reverter and one saturated tau. It does look like you can use the master blood orb, but this is somewhat counterintuitive in that you need the tier four altar to get the master blood orb. So this isn't really an option for us, at least not until we have the tier four altar. So we have to do it this way. And looking at the recipes here, the sanguine reverter is made in a hellfire forge. The hellfire forge, I think is fairly straightforward. It is iron, stone, and a blank slate. The blank slate, of course, is fairly easy for us to do. We can just take a stone and whack it in over here and that should somewhat quickly become a blank slate especially with our speed runes we could look at getting some more speed runes today as well because this is still not as fast as i would like it to be the hard part about that hellfire forge recipe though comes in the form of this bit right here with the uh, tartaric gem and the demonic will we'll come back to that in the future for now i'm just going to make the hellfire forge and stick it down over next to my alchemy table so i'll put that down maybe right about here now, before we get started with that, let's take a look at getting that saturated tau, this stuff right here, so that we can actually make the weak blood shard and, uh, and use the alchemical reaction chamber. To get the saturated tau, we have to build a different ritual first. We have to start with the edge of the hidden realm ritual. This ritual is going to open up a portal to the hidden realm, and we can go to the hidden realm to try and find some tau seeds that are going to allow us to get Tau fruit, which we can then use to try and get saturated tau. So in order to get this edge of the hidden realm ritual up and running, we need a total of 36 runes with a weak activation crystal, and we do need the runes to be specifically water, fire, earth, and air runes. So uh, the way this works, we need ritual stones, these ones right here. That's what it means when it says runes, by the way, ritual stones, and we need a master ritual stone. The ritual stones here are thankfully not too expensive. It's four obsidian, four reinforced slates, and any kind of blood orb. I believe the weak blood orb doesn't work here, actually. We are gonna have to upgrade to the apprentice blood orb. That is completely fine. The apprentice blood orb is just a block of redstone inside of our uh, tier two or higher altar, I believe. Let's do a quick one of those. I do think we should have enough life points in there, but just on the off chance that we don't, we'll put a few more in. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down the master ritual stone in the center that's right at the bottom of this multi-block here and then we put down all of the other ritual stones around and all of those other ritual stones do have to be the water fire earth and air ritual stones now there are kind of two ways you can do this you can just make the inscription tools from blood magic and you can use those to individually change the ritual stones into water fire earth and air ritual stones but it's actually a little bit easier if you take those inscription tools and craft them into a ritual diviner. That's kind of going to take some of the work out of it for us and do some of the ritual stone converting for us. But we do still have to make the inscription tools for this to work. And so each one of these inscription tools is made inside of a tier 3 altar. For the fire inscription tool, we need a magma cream. For the air inscription tool, we need a gas tier. For the earth inscription tool, we need an obsidian. And for the water inscription tool, we need a block of lapis. So I think we have basically everything there apart from the guest tier. However, thankfully, in the last episode, we did set up the alchemy catalyst underneath our mana pool over here to where we can do something like this and get a guest here fairly easily. Now, each one of these requires 1,000 life points. And if I quickly grab my divination sigil, we should be able to check. And I'm fairly certain that we have more than 4,000 life points currently in here. We do indeed, we've got 15,000. Uh, I completely forgot that we had the uh, upgrades here. So we do have a capacity of 20,000 in total. And so it should be fairly quick and easy for us to convert all four of these from regular items into their associated inscription tools. And once we have all four of those inscription tools, we should now be able to make that ritual diviner. We can. Nice. Now, as far as the master ritual stone here is, con uh, is concerned, this requires four regular ritual stones, four obsidian and that blood orb, which we do have. And then the regular ritual stones are kind of much the same. So if we look again in the sanguine sentium here, we need a total of 36 runes. I think that's on top of the master ritual stone. So I think we need 40 total, four to make the master ritual stone, and then 36 more to build the structure. And so... This is a one-to-one -one ratio of reinforced slates to ritual stones. So basically, we need to get 40 reinforced slates, which thankfully 
is just Forte Stone that we're gonna put through our system over here. What we do want to do is uh, we do want to go ahead and we can put the stone in here, of course. That's gonna put one in, but then we just want to change this puller module. Right now, it's gonna pull out the imbued slates. We want to change that so that it pulls it out at the reinforced tier. And we probably potentially want to look as well at maybe putting down some more speed runes because otherwise it might take a little while for us to get 40 of these slates. Before we do that though, boom and boom. Cool, that should now pull these out and it should just be a case of us mostly just giving more blood here. In terms of making more speed runes, these shouldn't be too difficult. We would need more blank slates, but I think this might well be worth doing. And a bunch of sacrificing later, we now have 40 reinforced slates. I did go ahead and make quite a few more speed runes here to make that a little less tedious. I put uh, three down on the back here, and then I added two more to each side of the altar. And so now things do go, thankfully, a fair bit faster in the altar, especially when it comes to making the different kinds of slates. And now back over in our crafting terminal, we should have everything that we need in order to make 40 ritual stones. If we drop all those in, boom. And then we should also have everything we need to make one master ritual stone as soon as we get the magician's blood orb. So we've had the tier one blood orb, we've had the tier two blood orb, the tier three blood orb here requires a block of gold and 25,000 life points. So our altar as it currently stands can hold 20,000 life points. This needs 25,000. We do get quite a lot of life points every time we use our dagger just due to the number of hearts that we have. I'm gonna let my hearts refill fully here because I want to get an idea of how many life points we get when we use the dagger because we don't necessarily have to upgrade the altar to be able to hold 25,000. We just have to get 25,000 in. So currently we're at 10,100. If I do this, it goes up to 14,400. So we do get almost 5,000. We got like four and a half thousand per dagger usage. And so I think what we should be able to do is fill this up to 20,000, let our hearts regenerate up to full, put the block of gold in, and as soon as it uses its first 5,000, we can then immediately top it back up to, uh, to close to 20,000 again. Let's make sure we've got enough liquid meat. We don't have that much, and so real quick, I will go and make sure that this is full. Perfect, and then let's give this a try. So we're at 20,000 in the altar. I'm gonna put it in. I think it's gonna go pretty fast. As soon as it gets below, 15,000, I'm gonna do this to fill it back up again. And this, I think is gonna be fine. We do need to do this again, because we're not quite at 25,000 there, but I think we should have enough now in to where this should just work. It totally did, nice, look at that, cool. So there is our tier three magician's blood orb, and now back over in here, we should have everything to make the master ritual stone. And the idea here is that we take our ritual diviner, this you can shift, and right click, this cycles through the different rituals available in Blood Magic. We are looking for the edge of the hidden realm. Once you have the ritual that you want, you can place down the master ritual stone, and then you just right click with the ritual diviner, and you'll see it's showing the, uh, the structure that we saw earlier in here. And if we go ahead and right click with this, because we used all of the inscription tools to make the ritual diviner, this is just gonna work. Again, if you wanted to, you could put all the runes down manually in this orientation, right here, and then you could go around with the inscription tools and right click on each rune to transform them individually. I don't really think that's worth it. Instead, using the ritual diviner, you can just right click and it will put down all of the ritual stones and automatically color them with the right inscription. And now the final piece of the puzzle is to activate this. In order to activate it, we need to get a weak activation crystal. The weak activation crystal right here is made with a lava catalyst and 10,000 life points in a tier three altar. The lava catalyst does require three buckets of lava, which we may or may not have. I think our mob slaughter factory over here is still running on lava. It is indeed. We should probably change that. I should probably get rid of this. Get rid of this. We can leave the lava here for now, but I just want to swap that out for a flux point so that it uses power from our reactor as opposed to burning through our lava, which is not really what I want. Instead, if we just do one of these and one of these, now we can save our lava and we can take the three buckets that we do have and use that to make a lava crystal, which we can then go place into our blood altar with 10,000 life points, which I think we should almost be at, especially once we do one of these. Uh, never mind, that's 4,000. Let's quickly fill this back up to 10,000. 
and once we're 10,000 life points in there, we can put in the crystal, and that is going to get us the weak activation crystal. Now, as it mentions in the book here, if we go back to the edge of the hidden realm, the activation cost on this is 80,000 life points. The idea there is that we have to get those 80,000 life points into our soul network. The soul network, of course, being the network attached to the blood orbs. And so if we go and grab our magician's blood orb out of here, the magician's blood orb here is going to be able to hold a certain amount. I actually don't know the exact amount. I think it might tell me in here, though, potentially. It does. So the weak blood orb, you can put a maximum of 5,000 life points into your soul network. The apprentice is 25,000. The magician's is 150,000. So you do need to have a magician's blood orb. And we need to either you know do this and shift right click with the blood orb to get blood into the network. Or alternatively, we can put the blood orb in the altar and then we can right click with the dagger. The dagger takes the blood from us, puts it in the altar and then the altar puts it into the soul network. And then we can right click with the divination sigil to see the amount of life points in our soul network. And we basically just have to keep sacrificing here and until we get up to 80,000, at which point we can then go and use the weak activation crystal on the master infusion stone, in so doing, unlocking a portal to the hidden realm. All right, and a bit more sacrificing later, we now have over 80,000 life points in our soul network, and so now back over here, we can take our weak activation crystal, right-click it on the master ritual stone, and we should feel a rush of energy flow through us. Look at that, boom! We now have our somewhat less cool looking in my opinion, portal to the endless realm. So in order for us to not die here, let's go ahead and uh, dump some stuff out here. Uh, let me grab my sword because there are gonna be mobs in the endless realm. I'll grab my cleaver as well. And let's real quick, take some iron and repair the iron sword here, just in case we do end up using this. Boom, and boom, perfect. So my meat feeder is full enough, that's fine. I don't need some of these wrenches with me for the time being. I do kind of want to have the inventory space. I'm going to clear out quite a bit of stuff here. I'll also take some torches with me. I don't think that's going to be strictly necessary, but uh, just on the off chance that it is, blocks are also probably a good idea. I'll take like a stack of cobblestone as well. So essentially all we have to do here is right click on this rod in the center. That's going to take us to the hidden realm. In here, we do get some keys to start with and we are looking specifically for tau fruit and or tau seeds i think it is possible that we find saturated tau i just think it's unlikely essentially the way this works is you can take the iron keys and you can right click them on these doors to open up new rooms now as soon as you do that mobs will start spawning pretty quickly and you're looking for stuff like this perfect and we did find some tau fruit which is actually tremendously useful that's really all that we need there are quite a few chests around the trick is just getting to them without dying uh, we don't really need the diamonds or the gold to be fair all we really need is cow fruit there are also spawners here that we could potentially uh, look at using in the future but honestly i think the tower fruit that we have here is is going to be fine so i'm quite happy that we found tower fruit so quickly because if you run out of iron keys you then have to make more iron keys and the Tartaric Gems make that a little expensive to do. So what we should be able to do here is we should be able to plant, I believe, this tail fruit onto some dirt. If I take just a regular piece of dirt. In fact, we might have a, a rogue piece of dirt kind of hanging around over by the water over here. We do indeed. Let me right click that and let's plant, whoops, the tail. Cool. So the trouble here is that you have to plant the tau, and then you have to have the tau grow, and as it's growing, it has to damage a player. The trouble is that it takes a while to grow. That is where the sigil of the green grove comes into play, this guy right here. It's made in a very similar way to the divination sigil that we already have on us. All we need to do is get another reinforced slate, which we should hopefully be able to do fairly quickly with our speed rune upgraded blood altar. If I do this and this, we are after... Uh, one reinforced slate, which should get pulled out into here as soon as it's done. Perfect. And then just like we did before for the divination sigil, we should be able to take our arcane ashes, which we have in here. And this time we need a growth reagent. This is made in the alchemy table with sugarcane, saplings, and sugar. So sugarcane we have, sugar we have, and saplings we have. Cool. So let's head back over to our alchemy table and then let's go ahead and put in 
these items right here. So two samplings, one sugar cane, and one sugar. Of course, we do have to put our blood orb into there, which I uh, thought we still had in our inventory, but I guess not. That's fine. Let's go and quickly grab one of our blood orbs out of the system. And if we have enough life points inside of here, which I think we should do, that should make the reagent. It does. Nice. And so now back over here, just like we did before, we're gonna right click with the arcane ashes. We're then gonna right click with the growth reagent. And then finally, we're gonna right click with the reinforced slate. We're gonna get a very similar animation to the last time, but this is gonna get us the sigil of the green grove. And the idea here is that it is going to use life points from our soul network, which are currently uh, surprisingly low actually. Let me go and put the magician's blood orb back into our blood orb here to get more life points in there because we're gonna use some of the life points to accelerate the growth of the tower fruit using the sigil of the green grove. Now, the chant is right here. It doesn't have to be the player that gets damaged do doing this. You can do it with like a normal mob. So for example, you could take like a pig or a cow, put the pig or a cow on top of the farmland, trap it in, and then have the tower fruit grow kind of passively in the background. And so long as there is an entity on top of the tower fruit for it to kind of steal life essence from when it's growing, you should get the saturated tail. But I find it easiest to plant it yourself, take the sigil of the green grove, shift right click to activate it. And then you'll see that we take damage as it grows. And once it's fully grown, it should give us saturated tail. And there we go, saturated towel. Nice, we can break that and we get some saturated towel. Fully saturated with my life essence. We can turn off the sigil of the green grove there. That didn't use too many life points, but we now have the saturated towel. Cool. So with this, that's kind of us one step closer to being able to make the weak blood shot here because we have the towel. We now just need to make the alchemical reaction chamber, which in and of itself, I don't think is particularly difficult to make. It's not. We need a standard furnace, which we have the ability to make, of course, if we get more compressed cobblestone. We then need to take our blood orb, of course, which we already have. And then the final piece of the puzzle is two more imbued slates. That should also not be too bad. Two more stone over in the altar, and we're gonna take it one step further than the reinforced slates. And once we have the two imbued slates, that is everything for the alchemical reaction chamber. Unfortunately, that's not the trickiest part of the equation here. For some reason, it doesn't like to put the orb in. That's fine, we can do that manually. Boom, cool. So we can go put our alchemical reaction chamber down over next to our Hellfire Forge, like so. And then now the tricky part here is the Sanguine Reverter, because for this, the recipe itself, not too bad. One more imbued slate, some shears, an iron ingot, and any kind of stone. But as I mentioned before, we need a Tartaric Gem, and we need to use 30 will, but we need to have at least 350 will. So the way this works, there are multiple tiers of Tartaric Gem. We have to start with the Petty Tartaric Gem. This is made in the Hellfire Forge with redstone, gold, glass, lapis, and one will. So one will is super easy to get because for one will, you can just, as it showed in here, use a demon will. And we do have a demon will that we just got from the Hidden Realm. If we didn't get one, you can use the Soul Snare just like we did a few episodes back. And so we need one redstone, we need one gold, we need one lapis baluli, and we need one glass. If we put all four of those into the Hellfire Forge, like this, with the Demon Will on the right hand side, that's gonna craft our first Petty Tartaric Gem. Now, the idea here is that the Petty Tartaric Gem can hold the will of mobs that you kill, however, those mobs do specifically need to be killed with the sentient sword. And this is where it gets tricky. The sentient sword here, again, not too difficult. In fact, it requires zero will to make. It just needs a petty tartaric gem and an iron sword. The slightly awkward part here is that I think it is gonna consume our petty tartaric gem to make this happen. So if I get one more iron sword here, I think we can put both of those into the Hellfire Forge and that should get us the sentient sword it does, but it did use up the Petty Tartaric Gem. That's fine, because you'll see that our Demon Will here actually has a pretty high will quality. If you kill a mob with the Soul Snare and get your Demon Will that way, it'll probably only last for one usage. However, if you get one of the high quality wills from the edge of the Hidden Realm, it will last uh, a couple more uses like we've got here. So uh, we just need one more Redstone, one more Gold, one more Lapis uh, Lazuli, and one more Glass. And again, we can reuse this demon will here, and we should see the will quality go down, I think from 15 to, uh, to 14 when we use it. We do, cool. And so essentially now, if we kill a mob 
with the sentient sword, it's going to put some will into this Tartaric gem. And as you can see, the different levels of Tartaric gem can hold a different amount of will, kind of in the same way that this demon will is holding will. You'll see we just spent one will quality to do that craft. And so that's where it gets a, a little bit tedious for the Sanguine Reverter here, because this only costs 30 will, but you have to have a Tartaric gem that has at least 350 will inside of it to do the craft, which means we have to get this common Tartaric gem. We have to take our petty Tartaric gem, upgrade it to a lesser Tartaric gem. To do that, we have to put the Tartaric gem in and we have to have at least 60 will. It's gonna cost us 20 to do it. Then we can upgrade to the lesser and then we can take the lesser. We can then use it to upgrade to the common, again, using 50 will, but we have to have at least 240. And then once we have the common, then we have to get at least 350 to spend 30 making the Sanguine Reverter. And right now we don't actually have kind of any mobs around for me to show. I don't think it works with me killing passive mobs, but you know what, let me give this a try. If I kill this pig here, do I get any? I don't think that I do. I think, yeah, no, will quality is zero. There's nothing in there. So I'm pretty sure we do have to kill hostile mobs. Now, the trouble with this is that the sword is just very, very weak. It's got six attack damage and 1.6 attack speed. The good news is that the attack damage and speed does go up the more will you have in your Tartaric gem. And so real quick, if we head to the nether here, let's see about killing a mob in the nether and kind of showing off the uh, the will going up inside of the Tartaric gem. Also, a lot of our passive mobs seem to have gone through here. That's, um, that's fine. Okay, let's try not to get killed by any of the blazers. The very good thing about our wireless charging as well, by the way, is that it is um, international or interdimensional, I guess, because you'll see that we are not actually losing any charge on our uh, jetpack here, which is very nice indeed. So let's try not to die to one of these wither skeletons. Let's instead, whoops, also try not to kill them. But as soon as I kill him there, you'll see that our will quality is now one. So we got one will from that. And so you can see here why I'm mentioning that this is a little bit tedious because essentially with the current sword at its current stage, uh, you'll see now we should be at three. We are at 3.3. So it went up a little bit. I think again, the fuller it is, the faster it might go. But at its current quality, we're gonna have to kill a lot of mobs to get from the first Tartaric gem to the second. We're gonna have to kill almost 60 to get up to 60 will. And then we're gonna have to do the same again, kill almost 240 to get up again. One thing we could potentially look to doing here though, is we could look at enchanting the sentient sword to increase the amount of will that we get for every mob that we kill. This is gonna be easier if we type in slash home. And so what I might do real quick here is I might look at getting just a standard enchantment table with some bookshelves to see about enchanting this to something a little bit better, especially considering, don't forget, that over here we have our XP tank and we also have the XP tap. And so if we want to, we can go and uh, maybe get a bit lower down here, but we can go and take some of that experience and use it to, uh, to hopefully very quickly get some good enchantments onto our sentient sword. All right, so not too long later, and we've got a standard Minecraft enchantment setup here. However, we do have the Apotheosis mod installed, and that kind of changes the way that enchanting works. You'll see at the top here that there's more information about the enchanting table, and when we open this up, the enchanting table also looks different. First of all, we're on the older version of Minecraft, so there's no blaze powder, but we do have Eterna, Quanta, and Arcana. And essentially, depending on what kind of bookshelves you use here, you get different quantities of Eterna, Quanta, and Arcana. The Eterna is kind of like the standard vanilla Minecraft stuff here. It controls the enchantment level. So the more Eterna you have, the higher level enchants you can use. And right now we've got 15 out of 50 Eterna, which is the maximum that we can get using regular bookshelves. You'll see each one gives plus one. There's a maximum of 15. The Quanta here controls the power range. Basically the higher the Quanta, the higher the levels of uh, enchants you're gonna get. And then Arcana increases the rare enchants. So the more Arcana you have, the more likely you are to get rare enchants. And so for us, we could look at upgrading our bookshelves here. There are these hell shelves, C shelves, end shelves, B shelves, and melon shelves. And then there's a few other blocks as well that you can also put down that give you more Eterna, Quanta, or Arcana. And so, Looking at the options here, the Hell Shelf increases the max Eterna, which increases the max level enchant we can add, and it also increases the Quanta, which is good. Although the C Shelf here is pretty similar. It increases the Arcana, which I don't know if that matters too much for us, but it does look a little easier to make. The C Shelf is Prismarine blocks with a Pufferfish, a Bookshelf, and a Water Bottle. 
Whereas the Hell Shelf here requires that we make potions of regeneration, which are not particularly difficult, but making this many, many times is a lot more work. And then the B Shelf here does take away Eterna and then adds a ton of Quanta. So it really gives you high level stuff. So I'm kind of thinking that I might actually go ahead and take all of these down. We can uh, then go ahead and recraft those, of course, into more bookshelves uh, in our crafting table. Thankfully, bookshelves, super easy to make for us. We've got a ton of sugar cane to make a ton of paper, and you can actually make books using slime and these black patterns, which are just wood, which we, of course, now have a ton of. And so if we wanted to make a ton of seashells here, the only thing we don't have really is prismarine blocks and puffer fish. The prismarine blocks here we can get from prismarine, which we can get by smelting the prismarine. And this prismarine, we're making prismarine bricks. The regular prismarine we can, of course, make in our jar with no temperature. Now, people did point out that crying obsidian, I think, is actually something that we saw inside of the hidden realm in the room we were just in. And so real quick here, if we head back into this room, trying very hard, of course, not to get hit by these very powerful uh, skeletons. But if we could potentially, again, ideally without dying, get and this might be easier said than done because there are so many skeletons here and we're gonna hold shift and and hope that they just die and don't kill me this is just gonna get me obsidian and i'm hoping afterwards i can kind of try and get the other obsidian although actually if i go back the exchanging gadget might make this tremendously easier than what i'm currently trying to do because otherwise it's just gonna take so long i didn't quite see how much uh crying obsidian was there but if we can get six we can go all the way up to the anchor which is gonna give us the fastest possible speed on the no heat jar so let's set our exchanging gadget to cobblestone and then back in here let's make sure we've got inventory space and then let's just quickly do this 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 and this that gets us one away from what we need there's then no more in here there is no more in here that is unfortunate i might use the last key here because you'll see that if we want to make the respawn anchor we need six crying obsidian and we're just one crying obsidian away i think it's probably still quite unlikely that we actually get any crying obsidian in the next room but we can give it a go yeah this is kind of more like the room that i have seen before in uh, in blood magic and this room unfortunately does not have any crying obsidian that's fine the crying obsidian itself even without upgrading it to the anchor is still a big improvement on no heat it's still a 3x efficiency let's go ahead and uh, throw down some crying obsidian here that's going to make everything uh, substantially faster and now if we want to make prismarine it is just cobblestone and organic water organic water was seeds and water that is fine we've got a ton of seeds now let's put those in here and then over in here can we get some organic water start we can and then once we've got a decent amount of organic water we can start turning that into prismarine and then we can of course turn that prismarine into prismarine shards using the crusher and then we can craft those into prismarine bricks which we can then use for our bookshelves on top of that we of course need the puffer fish and in order to get the puffer fish first of all we might have some down here we don't however there is an option of turning a tropical fish into a puffer fish using the alchemy catalyst and batania and so it looks like we can kind of take any fish that we have and if we cycle it enough over here we can get puffer fish and so we should be able to use our excuse me my friend uh please give me your will to live thank you we should be able to uh, to use basically any fish in here and just cycle all of them into puffer fish cool and we can of course get more of those by putting more bait into here and that bait of course we can get just like we did before using the trowel Okay, so there's been a slight change of plans. I'm about to make the Ender B Nectar Block here. The reason for the slight change of plans is that my old plan, uh, after crunching the numbers, would have required over a thousand Prismarine, which was going to take a while. And it turns out that the Ender B here can produce Dragon's Breath as a byproduct of us processing the Ender Honeycombs here. And the Dragon's Breath can then be used to make these Ender Shelves, which are actually better than the Sea Shelves, and the only other things we need here are an ender pearl, a regular bookshelf, and then some end stone. The end stone we can actually make in the jars with glowstone and lava. And so lava, of course, we have in abundance. We've got a ton of it over here. And glowstone we also have in abundance. And so if we go ahead and take, uh, I think, two stacks of glowstone here, that's going to get us 120 end stone, which is more than enough for the shelves that we need. So that's going to go ahead and make us 
the end stone. It's going to take six seconds, 120 times. That's fine. Whilst we wait for that, we do need to get the ender bee anywhere because the ender bee can also be bred with the diamond bee to get the enderium bee, which we do need to get the draconium bee. So this stage is essential for other kinds of progress. In terms of getting the ender bee here, it's just a skeleton bee and a zombie bee. I did just acquire a zombie bee. The zombie bee is another one that you get from a spawn egg. This time around, it is with a slimy bee over a zombie head. We of course did that over in this room. And then you'll see I've got quite a few bees down in here. My zombie bee is in here. I'm gonna take him away temporarily. And my slimy bee is in here. I'm also gonna take him away temporarily. Uh, they were both in here so we could get all of the, the blocks to make all the nectar blocks for all this stuff because it's all the same as it was before. And uh, my skeleton bee is actually over in here. There he is. We've got both of them in there actually. I'm gonna take my skeleton bee and my zombie bee and we can breed those together to get the ender bee. In terms of actually breeding them together here, we need uh, four rotten flesh and eight bones. That is completely fine. We've got 16,000 rotten flesh and we have gotten uh, 13,000 bones. Perfect, so I'll take eight of those. And then back over in our breeding pen, which is temporarily safe for uh, bee habitation, we can do one, two, whoops. I love it when they try and go into the hive straight away. That is unfortunate. I think when he comes back out, I might have to give him more rotten flesh here. So I'll wait for him to come out and then we'll hopefully breed those two together to get our first ender bee. And then we already have the ender bee nectar block. I'm probably gonna put this guy down over in this room as a temporary measure just to get us a bunch of combs so we can start processing those combs to uh, to hopefully get the dragon's breath that we need so we can kind of push these to the front of the queue and get all that going. Currently our system is clogged due to some fishy combs uh, because we were looking at a different way of getting prismarine via the prismarine bee, which you can do with the fishy bee, but that was a whole other process that was gonna take, I think, even longer. And so instead we'll do one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, cool. All right, we do want to get our bee box, actually, which I completely forgot about. That's going to allow us to instantly grow our ender bee into an adult bee. Boom. And boom. Cool. That should somewhat quickly get us the blocks required. Some of these other blocks here are just going to have to be taken out manually, like the fishy blocks and the zombie blocks, because currently they don't have drawers. We can put those over into our system, along with all the other stuff here as well that we were using for our previous setup. And then I will go and grab these other bees just because I don't want them to die if we ever do turn the wither spawner back on. And so now, basically, we're just gonna kind of wait until we have all of the end stone, which is coming in nicely. We're also gonna take all of the ender combs that come in through here, all the blocks of ender combs that we're gonna get. I'm gonna push those to the front of the queue. We're gonna try and get enough dragon's breath. And we're gonna try, I think, to get 15 of these end shelves, 15 end shelves should allow us to get up to the maximum 40 turner. The B shelf is gonna allow us to get to the maximum quanta as well. That's gonna give us 100% quanta. It does take away some turner, but we can offset that with a few more end shelves. And so I will come back in a second once we have enough dragon's breath and enough end stone to make these shelves. Okay, so the end stone is still coming in, uh, but I have processed eight of the blocks of endercom and we've got 18 dragon's breath here. One thing to note is that over here, you do have to put glass bottles into the centrifuge if you want to get dragon's breath, otherwise the endercomb just won't process. And so now that we have that, what we should be able to do is craft up some endstone bricks, and then we should be able to combine kind of all of this into some of these end shells. How many can we make? The answer is apparently one at a time because the dragon's breath turns into an empty bottle after you craft it. That is a little unfortunate. It means we kind of have to do this Oh, no, there we go. That one worked much better. Okay, nine. Perfect. So now if we bring this over, we should in theory uh, be able to get higher levels. We're not quite at the maximum that I wanted just yet, but if we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, already this has a higher Eterna than the 15 we had before and a higher Quanta and a higher Arcana actually. And the Twitch chat has pointed out that we can in fact use mob heads as a way of increasing our Quanta. So we might not actually need to get the B shelf, which does also increase the Quanta, but it does uh, have the downside of reducing your returner, which is not ideal. Uh, that end stone's still coming in, good. We can get more of these shelves because we want to get 13 or 14, I think. But uh, if I take some of these wither skeleton skulls, I believe I can put these down in the corner like this. Uh, 56, 66, there we go, yeah. So I think we can get up to 100% Eterna just by having a couple of skulls down around the outside. I do wonder if there's a limit to the number of skulls you can have. Nope, that doesn't seem to be. Look at that, 100%, nice. Can you go over 100%? You cannot, that makes 
complete sense. And so with that, we're now just kind of going for the Eterna. It's not quite at the max. You can upgrade the end shelves. You can enchant them, I believe, if you uh, if you really want to go crazy. Oh, no, there's a draconic end shelf, which needs a dragon head, sure. And then there's the pearlescent end shelf, which requires these end rods, which we can't make just yet, I don't think, because we don't have the chorus B, end B, and RGB. This is doable. I don't know if it's worth it. I think at some point we need to, uh, you know, accept our win and uh, and just continue. We could keep pushing and trying to get just like a crazy level of enchanting, but I think instead what is going to be more sensible here is getting a couple more of these remaining end shells, which does require more uh, standard Minecraft bookshelves. Again, thankfully, we can make a ton of those. And once we have quite a few more of these, we should hopefully get close to that 40 Eterna, which is the maximum that we can do with these current end shelves. So what are we at here? We're at 36. I'm going to get two more end shelves, and then we'll see about finally enchanting this sentient sword. All right, and two more of these end shelves later. We're now at 40 out of 50 Eterna, 100% Quanta, and 50% Arcana. Let's throw this in, and look at that. We need level 80 if we're going to get uh, Knowledge of the Ages 1, which I don't know if we necessarily need it, but I uh, do have the XP available. We just have to pull it out of the tank over here, and, uh, and then we'll give it a go. We'll see about getting that level 80 enchant. I think we should have more than enough XP in here. Yeah, you'll see it's coming out pretty slowly. We can definitely get up to level 80 here. All right, so about 45 minutes at the tap later. It didn't actually take that long, but it took a while. Uh, we now have 80 levels, and so we should be good to go over here. The Twitch chat is pointing out that at the top here, we, we do also have um, rectification. Apparently with the Quanta, it increases the chaos. You'll see here it says pure chaos. It controls the power range. Uh, rectification lessens the negative effects. So right now we've got 100% Quanta, which means we can get really good, but also really bad enchants. And apparently if we put down some rectifying blocks, we can increase our rectification to lower the chances of negative effects. If you type in rectification to JEI, it shows you the blocks that have a uh, rectification effect. And for us, I think we're probably just going to have to go with glowstone because I think that's really all that we can make somewhat easily here. Each one adds plus 1.5 to our rectification. And uh, the range here is somewhat okay, though. So I, I think we can put down some glowstone in a couple of spots here, like here and here. I think that's going to increase our rectification quite a bit. If I put it here, does that also increase it or is that outside? I think that's outside, but I think we can do this we totally can that gives us a rectification of 18 percent real quick the twitch chat has pointed out that now that we've added more shelves we actually didn't need these two wither skeleton skulls so now we just have the ones at the back uh, the third ones weren't doing anything and so now we're at 21 percent rectification 100 percent quanta 40 out of 50 eterna and 50 percent arcana all right let's finally give this a go so we can get knowledge of the ages apparently is not crazy good but we're gonna get other stuff i think with this Mm, we got Hell Infusion 3, which could be useful. I don't know if that's actually useful or not. We got a lot of goals, which I guess is good. We got Bane of the Arthropods 7, which is also not, not massively useful. Thankfully, of course, as per usual, it didn't use a, a ton of levels. But I do wonder if we might want to look at, at taking those enchantments off the sword and kind of giving it a uh, another, another go. Okay, so we got Grindstone. There are kind of better ways of doing this, but for us... That's just going to clear that and give us some XP back, which is, is grand. We could have made an enchantment extractor if we wanted to. Uh, this is a machine from Industrial Foregoing that does allow you to kind of, uh, at the cost of power, pull the enchants off of a tool or item and put them into a book. So if you have a book, maybe a book in Quell, I'm not actually quite sure, but you can kind of extract those enchantments and store them for later. I don't know if there was anything else on there that we actually wanted to keep. And so for us, the grindstone works just fine. Let's re-top up. To 80 again here and see if we can't get something a little bit better we're kind of looking for looting i believe here and maybe sharpness looting is going to give us more of the will teleportation fire aspect knowledge of the ages 2 and sea infusion 3 also not particularly good i don't think and so i'm going to give this a few more goes and see if we can't get something semi decent for what we're trying to do here Okay, I think it took like three more goes, but we got looting for Fire Aspect 2, Capture 2, Smite 6, Knowledge of the Ages 1. Um, I actually don't know. We, we got Knowledge of the Ages before. 
Knowledge of the ages. Enemy drops are directly converted to experience. Oh, but that might actually be terrible for us. I actually don't know if that fully negates any demonic will that we get. Because I think the idea here is that when you kill a mob, it normally drops the demon will. The idea behind the uh, Tartaric gem is that it, um, it kind of collects it and, and stores it straight away. So let me see here. We are at 12.2 in terms of our current will. If we were to go and kill this guy here, it did go up. It didn't go up by as much as I would have liked, <laughs> given the amount of effort that we put in there, but it did go up. And so I guess now all we can really do is, uh, is fight the horde of mobs to try and fill up our Tartaric gem. Thankfully, the diamond armor is doing pretty good work here along with the, uh, the meat feeder. I think the meat feeder is doing uh, tremendously good work for us here. And our Tartaric gem is full. So let's do a quick slash home. And we should now be able to upgrade this Tartaric gem from its current petty state to the lesser Tartaric gem. So I need a block of redstone. I need a block of lapis baluli and I need a diamond. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, that you can use the Tartaric Gem to kind of upgrade itself. Over here, if we put the Tartaric Gem in like this, and then put the other three items in, it will use the will inside of the Tartaric Gem to upgrade this Tartaric Gem, and then put it in the output slot, and you get to keep some of the will that was in there. So we needed to have at least 60, but it only cost 20. And now if we wanna go up to the next tier, which is the common Tartaric Gem, which we do, we need to go and get 240 and then spend 50. Uh, real quick, let me make sure my meat feeder is pretty full. It is indeed, good stuff. Uh, the only reason I need to check that is because that I think was kind of the main thing keeping us alive in the nether. So let's head back, let's keep doing the same thing and let's see if we can't get a another full Tartaric Gem. All right, that I think is 240. It is indeed 242, nice. That really didn't take too long. I think the effects are definitely helping. I think the biggest one that's actually helping us the most here is not necessarily looting four. I think it's actually Smite Six that is helping us so much with the uh, the skeletons and stuff inside of the nether. Either way, what do we need here? We need a block of gold, which we have. We need another imbued slate, which we can get, and then just a diamond. That is actually completely fine. Let's take one stone here. Uh, assuming we don't have any slates, which I don't think we do. I think we've used them all. We don't, that's fine. Let's go upgrade this stone to an imbued slate. And then I think we should be good to get that common Tartaric gem. And then finally, we should be able to upgrade to the tier four altar. And once we have the imbued slate back over here, we'll do the same thing again, making sure, of course, to put our Tartaric gem into the right slot. And boom, there's a common Tartaric gem. Okay, so now we need to get the Sanguine Reverter, this guy right here. We do need another imbued slate, that's fine. We also need 350 will. So hopefully, for the last time today, let's go bank through to the nether and let's try this one more time to see if we can't get up to 350 in our common Tartaric gem. This was actually incredibly quick. Like the fact that the, um, the, the it goes up faster as you get faster, we are, we're, we're at like 363 already. I've not killed many mobs at all. It's been maybe, two minutes since we cut away and they die so fast and the number goes up so quickly. You'll see just a few mobs there took us up to, uh, to over 400, especially if you can get a good number of zombie pigmen to come at you. You can uh, very quickly rack up a lot of points here. Uh, you'll see we're over 550. We're over 350 though, which is all that we needed. And so now we can do slash home and we should be good to go. Let me once again, get another stone. Let's upgrade that to an imbued slate. And then let's finally, get this sanguine reverter and use that to make our weak bloodshot. Back inside the Hellfire Forge, imbued slate, shears, iron, and stone. This time we're gonna put the common Tartaric gem over on the right hand side. And because we have at least 350 will, it's gonna cost 30, taking us down to 520, but it gives us the sanguine reverter, which we can now put into here. And finally, if we go and we take our saturated tau out of here, one is all that we need, that's gonna get us uh, guaranteed one weak blood shard. There is a chance that we get 
a second weak board shard. It's a 20% chance there. I don't think we're getting lucky though. We are not. That is completely fine because we do not need to get lucky. All we need to do is craft the large bloodstone bricks, which we can now do. We get eight of these and we only needed four. And so now back over in the sanguine centium again, if we go back to the blood altar, go back to tier four. And if we go and visualize the blood altar here, we now just need to make a bunch more blank runes because all it's gonna to take to build the outsides is more stone bricks, which we can of course do. We've got a ton of compressed stone here. We can craft that down, we can craft up stone bricks and we can put these on the outside. I think I'm gonna build these potentially down to the ground like this, just cause it's a little bit easier. And then we cap these off with the large bloodstone bricks like so. And then of course, if we want to actually make this a functional tier four altar, which we do need to do if we want to be able to set up that well of suffering, we need to get more blank runes. Specifically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need 28 more blank runes, which is basically just 28 more blank slates, which is just a ton of stone through the altar. So I actually went ahead and made 28 blank slates and 28 reinforced slates. The reason for that is because I, of course, need the 28 blank slates here to make 28 blank runes, but I figured that we might as well. And first of all, here, let me downcraft some of this compressed stone so that we don't end up using any, you know, diorite or andesite or anything like that uh, unnecessarily here. Let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this. Really out of stone again, eh? That is unfortunate. It looks like we're fully out of stone. That's completely fine, though. Of course, we can once again take a uh, triple compressed cobblestone, and I assume we can just smelt this over in the smelting factory now. We totally can, and that's a very quick way to get a staggering amount of stone, because we can just craft that down, craft it down again, and then craft that down again, and there, that's a ton of stone, lovely. And so that's gonna get us all the remaining blank runes. And then the reason I've made these uh, 28 reinforced slates is that I want to immediately upgrade these to runes of sacrifice. The runes of sacrifice here are gonna be very useful for us, especially in terms of, uh, and again, let's get more stone here, we'll do, this and this, especially in terms of the Well of Suffering, because the Runes of Sacrifice, if we uh, hold control here, it will open it up in the Sanguine Centium, they increase the amount of life essence gained in the Blood Altar through means that take health from a non-player entities. Each rune gives a bonus of plus 10% additively per rune. And so I think I mentioned the Rune of Self-Sacrifice before, that increases the amount of life points you get from using the Dagger, but of course, going forward, we're going to use the Well of Suffering, and that Well of Suffering takes damage from mobs and uses that to put life points into the altar. And so having all of these runes of sacrifice here is gonna massively increase the amount of life points that we get from each kind of tick of the rune of sacrifice. And so now that we have the tier four altar, what we should be able to do is we should be able to look at getting the next inscription tool, that being the Dusk inscription tool. For this, we just need a block of coal of all things. It's actually uh, surprisingly cheap on the resource front. It just, of course, requires the TFO altar and 2000 life points. And then once we have that, we should be able to craft up the Ritual Diviner Dusk edition, which is uh, actually requires two of these. So you know what, let me get a second block of coal. And we also do need to get two of the tier four slates. Now I accidentally did make one of these imbued slates. And so getting the uh, next slate here, which is called the demonic slate, getting two demonic slates should be a little easier with the imbued slate here. It should just be a case of whacking that into the altar. It does take 15,000 life points. So it's a little pricey and uh, we're not quite there yet, but we should be able to get up to 15,000 fairly quickly. And then of course, we're gonna have to run this stone through the basic slate, the reinforced slate, the imbued slate, and the demonic slate. And then we'll also do the same thing, of course, with our two blocks of coal. In fact, we can start with this. This is much, much quicker. One and two, perfect. And now we just need to do the slates. And once we have those, we should be able to make the Dusk Ritual Diviner, which will then allow us to actually build the Well of Suffering. Of course, to do that, whoops, hello, my friend. To do that, we do need yet more of the ritual stones because all of our previous ritual stones were consumed in making the edge of the hidden realm. And so we need to go to well of suffering and we need to get 36 more runes plus another master ritual stone. So again, another 40 of these standard ritual stones in order to get the well of suffering up and running. All right, and a few more slates later. We have 40 reinforced and two demonic slates. And so I think that we are about ready to go back over here. Let's get the Dusk Ritual Diviner. We just need our regular Ritual Diviner, which we do have, but it doesn't like to shift click in. That's fine, boom and boom. 
And then from there, we just need to get another 40 ritual stones, which we should definitely be able to do. Boom and boom. And of course, we need one master ritual stone, which we should also be able to do. There's a small chance that our blood orb is in here. And then there's also a small chance that our blood orb is actually just in the system and it didn't want to shift click it in. Do we have our magician's blood orb? We totally do. Let's put that right about here. Boom, we get the master ritual stone. Perfect. So now we should be able to put the well of suffering together. Shift right click to cycle through the different options. We are looking for the well of suffering. Perfect. And then if we go back to the book here, and we go across. The ritual attacks mobs within its damage zone and puts the harvested blood into a nearby blood altar. Put a blood orb into the altar, maybe add a few runes of sacrifice for good measure, and you'll never have to worry about your LP supplies again as long as you can supply enough mobs. The area that the ritual searches for a blood altar to deposit its blood into, maximum volume, full range, horizontal radius, 10 vertical radius is 15. The ritual can only link to one altar at a time. And then here at the damage range, all mobs within this area will take damage every second or so until they die. This does not include players, fortunately. So here, the max horizontal and vertical radius is both 15. So you can go 15 blocks, uh, I think, above or below, but I think I don't know if that's 15 above and below, if it's like 7.5 uh, above and below, if that makes sense. But essentially, I think that what we probably want to do here is we probably want to take this and put it down. Hello, my friend. Winter Rose, look at that. Hello. Goodbye. I think what we want to do is we want to take our Well of Suffering and we're going to put it down beneath the Blood Altar. However, the ritual itself does require some life points. If we go back to the page again here, it states that uh, the base interval is 25 ticks. Base usage cost is two life points. So it takes 40,000 to activate. And then every time that the effect happens, it costs two. The good news is we get way more than two back. So every time it happens, which is 25 ticks, it's just over a second or 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. So every one and a quarter seconds, it's gonna deal damage to any mob within its radius. And then we're gonna get life points equal to the total number of uh, damage done, which the more mobs we have, the more damage is done, the more life points we get. However, to do it, we have to spend two life points. And so we kind of always have to have life points in our blood network to make this happen. And so what I think we probably want to do is set up another blood altar kind of beneath this blood altar and we want to use that blood altar as an intermediary. If we can have all of the life points go into that first blood altar, I think we can then just place one of our blood orbs, like our magician's blood orb, directly into that altar, and then we can kind of try and siphon out extra life points after that and run those up into this blood altar that we have here, and then it's this one here that we will use for auto crafting. That's the plan at least, but we're gonna have to do that in the next episode because unfortunately, we are out of time for this episode of Sky Bees 2.